Now that we've seen the, the book, uh, How to Catch a, a Leprechaun, <clears throat> or How Not to Catch a Leprechaun, uh, I want to introduce you to um, a, an artist whose name is Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg is an artist who, who drew cartoons. He's a cartoonist, but he draws these cartoons that are just, uh, he makes these simple machines that uh, are very, very complex. They're in, you know, they, they go in a certain order that do, that creates a simple job. Uh, so let me show, it's, it's easier to explain uh, if I show you one. But Rube Goldberg is a, a cartoonist. He's an artist who creates a, a simple job, but he does all of these simple machines uh, that go in a certain order that completes this one simple job. In this case, we're trying to staple paper together. And so if you follow along with the arrow, there it is, uh, and we follow the alphabet letters in order, uh, this is how it works. It's a chain reaction. And so the alarm goes off, which vibrates the table. It shakes the table, which knocks over this ball, which uh, <clears throat> falls into a, a, um, a, a wheel with spoons. And the spoons uh, twirl and, and spin and hits the cup a teacup that's filled with marbles, knocks it over, the marbles spill out, fall into a bucket, it fills the bucket up, which makes it heavy, which then pulls the string, which is tied to a pair of scissors, which cuts the string, which is tied to a shoe that drops onto the stapler, which puts the staple uh, into the paper. So this is that one simple job, and Rube, uh, uh, Rube um, Goldberg uh, again, creates these simple uh, machines that in a uh, that has a chain reaction that completes one simple job. Here's another example. <clears throat> this time using real objects, and so I'm going to put in the uh, the numbers so we see what order the events occur in. So it starts the chain reaction starts with the boot. The boot kicks the bowling ball. The bowling ball bumps into the bowling pin. The bowling pin falls, which is tied, which pulls the rope through the pulleys that's connected to a door of a bird cage, which it pulls it open, and an origami bird flies out, uh, and as the door uh, flies open, it hits a, a metal marble that rolls down the spiral track that hits the domino. That domino hits the other domino, which hits the other domino, which hits the other domino, and you, you, get, you get the point. It's a domino effect. And the last domino falls into a um, back of a pickup truck. Now the pickup truck and the weight are the same uh, weight, so they balance on the scale. And so when the um, domino falls into the truck, that makes the truck heavier than the weight, which uh, makes the uh, seesaw tilt down and it becomes a ramp. And the, the truck runs off the ramp onto the track and then it hits the hammer, which knocks the hammer over, which hits the arm of the toaster. It pulls the toast down, the toaster heats it up, and then uh, when the toaster pops out, or the toast pops out, it flies up, uh, hits the scissor handle, which closes the scissors, which snaps the rope, which drops the weight, which uh, causes the hand to go up. It's a sculpture of a hand that hits the switch that makes the light come on. So the simple uh, task, the everyday job, is just turning on a light bulb. But they set up these Rube Goldberg uh, simple machines of um, uh, levers, um, uh, ramps, and pulleys uh, to activate uh, this chain reaction that, that completes the task. Now, I want you guys to meet Walter Wick. Walter Wick is the photographer who photographs um, all of these objects for I Spy books. So if you're a big fan of I Spy books, um, which, you know, I can look at these I Spy books forever, looking at these photographs and trying to find all of the things that are hidden in them. Well, he's the, he's the artist who photographs all of those images. And the reason why I bring up Walter Wick is because him and, and his crew created a Rube Goldberg machine just to um, uh, make a hot air, uh, make a balloon lift up, sort of like a hot air balloon. And so they're using all of these toys and blocks and uh, things to create this Rube Goldberg uh, invention that basically lets a balloon go up in the air. So let's look at this in, um, uh, in action 
in real time to see how this actually works. Okay, that's... Now, let's look at this, and uh, it, this is the second one. Um, this might be a trial run before they made the, the bigger, elaborate one uh, earlier. But let's look at this in, in the slow motion. All right, boys and girls, now we know a little bit more about leprechauns and their stories. Um, we also know a little bit more about uh, Rube Goldberg, um, who uh, created all these uh, simple machines that had a chain reaction to do a simple job. Um, and so what if we used some of these simple machines, like the inclined, inclined uh, plane, which I just call a ramp. Um, what if we use, um, there's the ramp, uh, the wedge that sort of pushes things apart, uh, levers, uh, which is uh, used for pulling, um, or, or um, that's, uh, you know, could use, be used for different uh, purposes as well. We have uh, wheel and axles. Uh, we have uh, the screw, I like the example of the screw top lid. And of course, um, pulleys. And so how can we use these simple machines to crea uh, create a trap uh, for a leprechaun? And so let's design maybe your Rube Goldberg ideas using simple machines to capture a leprechaun. And you can use the leprechaun that you drew and cut it out, and you can use that as, um, a, as a test run and see if you can sort of catch it and you can play around with it in your, in your drawing. What I've, what I've done is I have uh, drawn out my Rube Goldberg machines, uh, simple machines that uh, in a chain reaction uh, does one simple job. In this case, to capture my leprechaun. Now, I, I, the leprechaun I drew at the very beginning with Mr. Hub, I went ahead and cut my leprechaun out so I can actually play in my drawing or I can play with the drawing. So I set up my trap. So we have the pot of gold as the bait. It says free gold coins. And so my leprechaun is going to come in. Oh, look at this pot of gold. I can't resist the pot of gold. And so he's going to try to pick up the pot of gold and move it. But when it tries to move it, it's going to pull the rope that pulls the hammer. And the hammer is going to fall forward and hit the lever, which is going to throw the baseball into the bucket. And the bucket is tied to a rope and a pulley and it's going to pull the bucket down knocking over the dominoes, and the dominoes are going to fall and hit this metal marble, and the metal marble rolls down the track, and it goes into this little bucket, and the weight of the marble is just enough to make this, the screw turn and spin around and around and around, and as it does, it pulls the string, and it's connected to uh, Jenga blocks, and one of the blocks is really shifty, so it's going to pull out the block in the middle, which causes the whole jingo blocks to fall, which is holding up a big, huge, ginormous bowling ball that has a string tied to a pair of scissors that's going to pull the scissors close. It's going to cut the string, which is tied to these pulleys, and it's going to drop ah, the cage down, and the leprechaun stepped out of the way. Oh, you can't catch me. See you next year. Bye, everybody. So there's my, it's how I try to catch a leprechaun. How are you going to catch a leprechaun? What kind of design, what kind of Rube Goldberg designs are you going to use to catch your leprechaun? Have fun, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day, even though you're probably seeing this after St. Patrick's Day. Uh, have a great um, uh, month of March. And I'll see you in the art room. Bye, everybody.